let's talk about the next two cryptography topics, Caesar cipher and XOR. Now the Caesar cipher does not use any new techniques at all. Um, in the Caesar cipher, uh, this Wikipedia page will tell you about it. The Caesar cipher is where you just move every letter over in the alphabet. So if you move everything three letters to the left, a D would turn into A, an E would turn into B, and so on. So really all you have to do here is simple string manipulation. You just turn the strings into bytes, subtract a constant or add a constant to them, and control the wraparound from A to Z. So it's not that hard. And uh, here's, so encrypting this with a key of seven, you just move every letter forward seven spaces in the alphabet, decrypt this, so you can write it. This is very simple. It takes nothing more than uh, the loop, that sort of thing we did in the very first uh, string project. Then this one here, you don't know the key. The Caesar cipher is easy to crack because the entire key space is only 25. So you can just print 25 lines of output with different shifts and see which one of them turns into a readable word. Here, this stuff is in hex encoding. So every two characters of hex is one byte and now you shift it by an amount from 1 to 255. So now there's 255 possible values, and again, one of them will turn into a line of readable text. And here you've got an image, which has been shifted the same way, so you have to try 255 um, possible shifts and see when it turns into a valid ping. And for this, you might want to read the specification and find out what bytes of a ping are always the same. Ping always starts with a few characters that are always the same, so you could just decrypt the first few characters until you find out what the key is, and then decrypt the whole image and read the image. And here's a Vignier cipher with eight keys, so you use different keys for each byte. You move, shift the first one by, say, 1, the next one by 2, the next one by 10. You don't know those eight numbers, and that might sound impossible, but it's not, because the first eight bytes of a ping are always the same. So you can deduce the key from what you've got here, and deduce all eight bytes of the key, and then decrypt the whole thing. So that is a simple challenge. Um, those use nothing more than the techniques we've used before. But the other thing I want to show you is XOR, and this is a really important transformation, more common than the Caesar cipher, which is only used for old, weak encryption these days. This is really used in all modern encryption. The XOR by itself is not enough to be secure, but it's part of serious encryption schemes like um, RSA and AES. So XOR combines two bits. So if you have a zero, XOR with zero, the answer is zero. If the two bits are different, 0 and 1, or 1 and 0, the answer is 1. If the two bits are the same, 1 and 1, you get 0. That's the truth table. The reason you don't use AND or OR for encryption is they would take input that's half 1s and half zeros and turn it into output that is 3 quarters the same. And that would destroy information. Shannon entropy, you can calculate it. If I start with half 1s and half zeros and encrypt with a key that's half 1s and half zeros, I better still have half ones and half zeros. If I don't, I have destroyed information and it will not be possible to decrypt. So XOR is a transformation that has that property. It does not destroy any information. So you can encode characters in ASCII. This is what A is. This is 65, one in the 64 place and one in the one bit. This is 66, 67. So that's the characters. And so you can take A, XOR, little s. Here's an A and here's an s in binary, and you just do the bits one by one. These bits are the same, so the answer is zero. These bits are the same, so the answer is zero. These are different, so those bits are one. And these bits are different, so that's a one. So you end up with this character, which is the numeral two. So A, XOR, s. This should be an s, by the way. That's a typo. Gives you two. So we can do XOR encryption easily in Python. So let's do this. This is going to be XOR1.py. 
put in that stuff. Whoa, I didn't get the right stuff. Copy. There. All right. So here's my plain text, just hello. And the key is going to be three. So for every character in the plain text, I'm going to take the value of that character. The ORD function will give me the numeric value in ASCII of that character. I XOR it with the key. This up arrow is the XOR command. And then I take the number, which was created, and turn it back into a character. And so then I print what happened here, the original character and the encrypted character, and move on. So let's see how it works. So if I Python 3 XOR. All right, so here's the characters. And um, this is XOR. H goes to F, L goes to O, O goes to L. And so here's hello. And there's the key of three. Here's the um, original data in hexadecimal encoding. 4B is a capital H, 46 is a capital E, and so on. And here's the output, K fool. So I've. Um, all right. Actually, this might be. I think this is the output, not the input, 4B. Because after the encoding, it might turn into something unprintable. Because H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, that's only like 49. So this must be the K. All right. Anyway, that's the game there. So now if you encrypt the same thing, so encrypting hello turned it into K fool. If I encrypt it a second time with the same key, and I can do that by just changing the input. So I'm going to copy XOR1 to XOR2. And I'm going to nano XOR2. And I'm just going to change the plain text to K fool. I know I didn't change anything else, so it's going to do the same operation. Python 3 turns it back into hello. And this is a property of XOR. If you encrypt something by XORing with a constant value, XORing again with the same value will just take you back where you started. So you do not need to write a separate decryption program. The encryption program is the same as the decryption program. So. Here's some challenges. Encrypt this text with a key of 7. Decrypt this one with a key of 19. That's a single byte decimal value. And here decrypt it, and you don't know the key, but it is a single byte key between 0 and 255. So this will turn into a readable sentence when you get it right. And here you have an image, which is a ping image, and the key is a single byte. So you have to find the byte that will turn this file into a readable image. Here's a JPEG and here's a zip archive. So you have to uh, look up those formats and find what bytes are always the same and you can use them to find the key. So there's a few challenges to practice some manipulations.